The Milwaukee Bucks front office is an under-talked about factor to the team's success, as since stealing Giannis with the 15th overall pick back in 2013, they've drafted and acquired deep-range shooters who've helped keep the floor spaced. That's why Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday are elite second and third scoring weapons, which gives Bucks fans a trio that ranks highly on my top 10 big three list from July 23rd. However, in the Bucks' run to a championship just over a year ago at this time, the mainstream sports media was debating about Giannis being the Robin of this team. In response to that narrative, Adetokounmpo embarrassed those talking heads by posting 50 points, 14 rebounds, and 5 blocks in the most important game of his life, which closed out the Phoenix Suns in 2021's NBA Finals. Most recently, in 2022, despite going down to the eventual East champion Celtics in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Semifinals, the Greek freak still resembled the big Aristotle, proving he's this era's version of Shaq. If you're not ready to call him the most dominant player in the game, Giannis is about to dunk all over that opinion, given he's the most disrespectful NBA player in existence. So should that give him the title of the best player in the NBA? Stay tuned to find out. Before continuing, according to YouTube's analytics, only 15.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so press the box for more content like this regularly if you haven't already. Help this video and YouTube's algorithm by leaving a like, and make sure you're following me on Instagram at DeepLowHoops. I can't thank you enough for any bit of support. Now into the content. The Milwaukee Bucks were number one among all 30 teams in defensive rating throughout the 2021-22 regular season by far, a fact you may have forgotten about after the previous reigning champions were eliminated in this year's second round at the hands of the Boston Celtics. The 100-plus game NBA grind sees the last team standing both mentally and physically win 10 times out of 10, meaning there's no excuses for any team losing a series. You have to give credit where it's due. In this case, that goes to the Celtics, who dominated Game 7 of that series. Making that clear, you still have to show some love to Giannis and the Bucks for scrapping and clawing without the services of Chris Middleton, who went down permanently with a sprained MCL against the Chicago Bulls a series earlier. The Bucks took care of a Bulls team that was without an extremely underrated point guard in Lonzo Ball, but it was still impressive that Milwaukee beat up the six-seeded Bulls three straight times in that series without their second-best player. But what Giannis did in round two was something else. As he averaged 33.9 points, 14.7 rebounds, 7.1 assists, and over a block and a steal each game over seven outings against Boston. By putting the Bucks on his back on both ends of the court, he continued to make the blasphemous yet popular storyline, attempting to prove he's the Bucks' second best player, look shockingly idiotic. What we didn't talk about enough after those finals was how legendary it was when Giannis took that trending critique initiated by the hilarious Kendrick Perkins and just completely shut up anyone who took that opinion seriously. You have to credit Adetokounmpo for attempting throughout the years to adapt to the modern ways of the NBA by adding a three-point shot, but the scariest part about the two-time MVP is that despite how dominant he's been, he's still yet to realize that adding a deep-range shot isn't necessary for him to take over. Even though he's the most dominant downhill attacker when slashing to the basket in NBA history, Giannis is still yet to fully embrace his player archetype as a pure slasher. Despite not having a jumper, Adetokounmpo still provides floor spacing because defenders can't let him gain momentum. He showed flashes of being great as a first-year player, but since that rookie year where he was a role player who averaged only 6.8 points per night, Giannis has added a shocking amount of upper and lower body strength. Combine that with his improvement of on-court abilities like his handle, playmaking vision, finishing through contact, plus footwork and soft touch, and us Hoops fans alive today have gotten to witness the trajectory of an all-time finisher around the basket. But one ability you rarely hear people bring up when speaking on the topic of Giannis Adetokounmpo is how much of an impact he has on the defensive end. This end of the floor makes him not merely the most dominant player in the game today, but debatably the best player ahead of even Stephen Curry. But I'm not on the record as going that far after the chef's dismantling of a Celtics defense that was generational in the playoffs. While Curry's very solid on defense, he doesn't have to carry the Warriors defensively like Giannis does. Steph's got the services of one of the greatest defenders of all time in Draymond Green. Looking at Curry's 2022 finals averages compared to Adetokounmpo's 2021 finals, and Steph's underrated defense is shown off by the fact that he averaged two steals per night, the most between he and the Greek freak, by a substantial amount. 
However, the 1.8 blocks per game put up by Giannis were crucial on the back end of the Bucks' defense against Phoenix. Overall, Giannis's defensive rating in his 2021 run was much lower than Steph's in his 2022 run, and Giannis's wingspan and wherewithal are the main source of rim protection for Milwaukee. Steph and Giannis both averaged five assists per game, but Curry's passing out of double teams takes the cake in the playmaking department. Of course, Curry's presence from deep range is unheard of, but from there, Giannis has the advantage in his respective final series significantly in points with 35.2, rebounds with 13.2 per game, and field goal percentage at 61.8%. To be fair, the Suns' defense in 21 wasn't as good as the Celtics in 22. Also, Curry's nearly a foot shorter than Giannis. We all know Steph's been a top, if not the top player in basketball since 2015, which is unbelievable given his stature. There's no denying Curry's offensive talent is unforgettable, but the reason Adetokounmpo's in the debate for the best player in the league right now is that unlike Steph, as I said, he has to put the defense on his back. Still just about to turn 28 years of age in December, many downplay the fact that Giannis has already made four all-defensive first teams throughout his career, five all-defensive teams in total. Generally, no one pays attention to defense, but the Greek freak's springiness, fundamentally sound verticality when contesting shots around the hoop, and the guy's foot speed to be versatile enough to be a lockdown perimeter stopper as well, make him an absolute mammoth on this end of the court. You rarely hear people mention how much energy he expends on defense, and also the fact that Giannis is the Bucks' leading rebounder. It's time those weapons in Adetokounmpo's repertoire start becoming brought up with him an equal amount as his slashing does. From an opponent's perspective when traveling to Milwaukee to face the Bucks, if a team's players aren't in the right mindset in terms of committing to staying mentally strong and being ready to bounce back from runs throughout the night, Giannis is going to make them look silly, hence the title of this video. Al Horford of the Boston Celtics was one of those players in the right mindset, as after Giannis dunked on him, Al shook his head and dunked on Giannis right back. But you'll just see the strongest of teams and the strongest of leaders across the association stunningly fold to the pressure that Giannis puts on them, minute 1 through 48, on both ends of the court, at a level that not enough people appreciate. Regardless, any disrespect Giannis receives, he gives out 10 times of that disrespect to his opponent, as old school basketball fans love this man because of his one goal to punish opponents. Adetokounmpo's not about the buddy-buddy culture in today's game. He's out to build up rivalries and demolish said rival, which is the best part about not just the sport of basketball, but competition in general. Who's better in your opinion though, Steph or Giannis? Best answer down below in the comments gets the next video shoutout, and the top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by September 21st earn free NBA merchandise of their choosing. So Compete in Community Speaks by leaving your take on the question. Two shoutouts from my last two uploads go to Boston Haltane and Ken Saludo. Pause to read their takes along with the honorable mentions. 